This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today, we are journeying into the belly of the beast, that big square building that we call the state capitol. It is the, where the office of the lieutenant governor, the governor, 25 senators, and 51 members of the house all are housed there. Can they get along? Probably not. Can they, can they at all get it together for us, our taxpayers? Probably not. But as we speak today, they are talking about the ominous rail project. It's a special session, and they're trying to figure out how to get it paid for. Ooh, what can I say? Will we, the residents of Honolulu, be left with unfinished rail system and debt? Can the leadership pull it together so that we, the taxpayers, aren't paying for this for the rest of our lives? I don't know. My guest today is Scott Foster, the founder of the Hawaii Advocates for Consumer Rights. Scott and I worked together for so many projects, like the stewards for Waimea Valley. And the stewards were credited with saving Waimea Valley from the Ferris wheels and the, all that nonsense. Uh, Scott worked with the Pew Foundation for the um, National Marine Monuments and the Rose Atoll, the Marianas Trench, and who knows what all. <laughs> and so he was a part of the Needle Exchange Project. Yes, helped pass that. Yeah. And of course, he and Jugi Heen, my dear friend Jugi, they will revitalize the Kapuna Caucus of the Democratic Party. So here we are today with Scott. And as I said, that ominous rail project. So, Scott, aloha. Aloha, Marsha. Now tell me, tell me, how in the world, you seem like a nice guy, how <laughs> in the world did you get involved with this rail thing? Or uh, when did you get involved? Because this rail has been going on forever. When did you get involved? Well, it was going on before I got involved, but it had quieted down. Uh, the year was, let me see. Uh, I'll read you a, a, a headline story here. Oh, and is that the one from the new, the Star Bulletin? Right, uh, Monday, August 8th, 2005. Transit approval not assured. Vote on Wednesday stirs memories of past council rejection of a plan offered in 1992. So it was 1992 that I got involved. It was uh, several years before I uh, helped create Advocates for Consumer Rights, Hawaii Advocates for Consumer Rights, uh, which uh, uh, Ralph Nader came over to Hawaii and, and uh, uh, helped us co-found that, organ that organization. And it was because of uh, issues such as the, the rail project and many other things, uh, car insurance reform and, and banking charges reform and on and on and on, that, that we created Advocates for Consumer Rights. But all by myself in 1992, I was living in Moili, Ely. And uh, <clears throat> it was announced that uh, uh, drawings and pictures and and uh, uh, collateral material for the proposed rail project was going to be presented all over the island at neighborhood boards and at city hall and all over the place. So I went, went to a couple of them just to see what was being proposed. Uh, 1992, I'd been in Hawaii uh, about seven years, so I wasn't really Akamai about everything, but I was learning. And when I saw the photographs of the intersection in Moiliili, 
of where University and King and Britannia merge, that uh, the photograph uh, showed that that entire intersection was going to be under concrete. The entire viewplane was going to be devastated. It was at that moment that I realized, wait a minute, this thing is too big. It's over-engineered. It's overbuilt. This can't be. So I got involved and, and uh, started protesting the whole thing. And uh, here I would congratulate uh, Cliff Slater. That's when I met him in 1992. And Cliff and I are on opposite poles of the political spectrum. He's a Republican. I'm a Democrat. But uh, Cliff, through the years, has done an amazing job of documenting how this thing came to be that we're dealing with today at the legislature as the Senate prepares to vote on the funding mechanism uh, to continue building this huge project that we've been fighting for all these years. Now, where, where are we in the process today? What's going on today at the legislature? Today being the last day of August. This is the third day of the special session. It began on Monday. Uh, about 10 days ago, there was a, uh, a joint hearing uh, to get ready for the special session. Uh, yesterday, after a five-hour hearing, the uh, vote to move the uh, uh, funding bill to the full Senate for a vote today at 1.30 at the Capitol uh, was passed by one vote. It was contentious. Uh, uh, won't get into all of that at this point. But uh, so today the vote is whether to pass the bill over to the House for their consideration, where this whole process will be repeated. They will be hearing the House, if the bill passes today, uh, the House will then be hearing the bill. And all of this has got to conclude Friday. Well, then the, I read that the neighbor island people voted against, neighbor island senators voted against, most of them. Yes. Uh, that was an interesting part of this. Uh, uh, this the uh, tourism industry, after uh, uh, the informational briefing that the Senate had a couple of weeks ago uh, uh, jumped on this because they did not want the transient accommodation tax raised, the TAT. That's the TAT, okay. The, the TAT, the T-A-T, the TAT is the transient accommodations tax. And that is a state tax on hotel rooms, uh, which at this point in time, it, it's a small amount. Uh, if, if, this, uh, if the TAT is increased, as they're planning, uh, it'll increase it less than $3 a day. So that's, that's the big fuss. And the reason the neighbor island senators voted against it is they were erroneously informed that they would be, the neighbor islands would be paying part of the TAT, which they will be collecting the TAT and the, the increase in the TAT. But the, the point that I have made to the legislature uh, in my testimony is that 80% of the GET is collected on Oahu. What that means is the Oahu taxpayers pay 80% of every state project on every island, including schools, teacher salaries, hospitals, roads, environmental programs, and all of the rest. So it doesn't seem to me to be, quote, unfair that the TAP be increased and that that money go to help Oahu pay off this monster project, which, by the way, I have fought from day one. It's too large. It's over-engineered. It's, it's just a... And it's ugly. And it's ugly. All these things. Hawaii sells beauty, and that's ugly. But it's here. But it's here. And so what, now what? what my organization advocates for consumer rights is trying to do is get the best of what we can get 
because of the circumstances we now find ourselves in. So if we, if each hotel room is three dollars a day, because it's already at you know three hundred dollars. So what's another three dollars? Well, it's more. It's it, the tat is is already in place. I think it's. I'd misquote the number, but it it will be an additional less it, than three dollars a day. Okay, in addition to whatever taxes they're already paying. Yes. Okay. So. Now. Statewide, not state, just on the neighborhood. Statewide. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so does the state, do the neighbor islands that they collect from the hotels on those islands, they get to keep that much already? Well, already the, the state refunds a certain amount of it, not all of it, to the various, uh, various uh, uh, islands, counties. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, uh, they, uh, the state will be increasing that amount a proportional amount. So the, the counties will be doing better, actually. And that's why I'm very surprised at, at the way the votes went on the neighbor islands. Um, political cover, maybe? I think it's more that the uh, tourism industry does not want any additional fees that don't come into their pockets, such as the uh, various fees that they charge visitors. And when they raise the room rates, uh, anything else that gets added on means that they maybe can't raise the room rates as large as they wish. Now, here I would point out the great article in the morning paper, uh, the morning uh, uh, Civil Beat. Uh, oh, I got it here. The time, yes, it's this morning. Excellent article. Anybody interested in this issue, read Lawmakers Skeptical That Hotel Room Tax Hike Would Hurt Hawaii Tourism. The senators, several of them, Donna McMurdo Kim, uh, to her great credit, uh, had asked for documentation that the tourism industry had been, uh, to, to what the tourism industry had been saying about it. And damned if she didn't get it. And it's all published in, uh, in this article in the morning Civil Beat. So anyone really interested, I urge you to go to civilbeat.com and read that. Uh, so that documents how much is taken in, where it comes from, and does it do anything to slow tourism? To the contrary. Uh, it, it, it has, well, not to the contrary, but it has a, apparently no effect on it because tourism in the last, and again, I don't want to misquote dates, but the last years, decade or so, has gone from 6.5 million to 8.5 million, a steady, I believe the number was 8% increase year after year after year, despite the fact that the TAT has been raised several times. It's had no effect on tourism. Okay, well, we need to take a break and we will be back and let's talk about some more of this, what's going on with our legislature. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. And we're back talking with Scott Foster, who is founder of the Hawaii Advocates for Consumer Rights. And Scott is bringing us up to date on what is going on at the state legislature special session 
and about getting us funded or not for the rail. So Scott, tell us what what is going on today, what do you expect today, and then can we rewind for those people that haven't been with us since 1992. So, Well, today at 1.30, the Senate will either vote to pass the combination increasing the, GE, the, the TAT, the transient, transient Accommodations Tax on hotel rooms, plus extending the general excise tax for, I've forgotten, several more years. Uh, it's, uh, that's the compromise, is the combination of those two taxes. Uh, it will either pass or it won't. If it passes, it will move over to the House and go through the whole process again. And again, this all has to be done by Friday. The whole session has to be done by Friday. Uh, if it doesn't pass, I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's anybody's guess. Yeah. We'll yeah. Stay tuned for that. A little background. Uh, I uh, was fortunate enough to have worked for and with uh, the late... Uh, State Representative and Council Member uh, Dr. Duke Bainham. On June 2, 2009, Duke Bainham had written a letter uh, uh, signed by uh, then Council Member Duke Bainham and Council Member Charles DeJew to the Under Secretary for Policy, United States Department of Transportation. And I'm just going to read one. Oh, yeah, please. No, go ahead, read. One paragraph here. Uh, we have the opportunity to go a long ways in solving our transportation problems while still protecting our lifestyles if and only if all transit alternatives are given a full and fair consideration. We are only requesting that light rail at grade and elevated be examined as an alternative to all elevated systems as currently pursued by the city administration and that money not be spent for preliminary engineering or construction until this evaluation is complete. It is for this reason that we bring this matter to your attention. And now this that was, was the day before he died. This was, uh, he died on June 9th. Right. This was June 2nd. Okay, a week. Unfortunately, then council chair Nestor Garcia held the vote, and again, memory fails, a week or 10 days later, maybe two weeks, Duke Bainham was dead, he was our turn vote, and that brings us to today. Uh, it, of course, it was a devastating loss when I woke up the next morning and realized that I had been working with Duke only a few hours before he died of a heart attack. Right. And I knew what this meant. The one thing we were successful in that ill-advised council meeting was we were able to force uh, the uh, city and county, and I think Hart was in place then, to come back to the city council every time there was a bond issue. In other words, they wanted full bonding authority without having to come back to the council. That was the one victory we got out of that. Now, if I remember correctly, they had a council meeting almost immediately after Duke died, even right. without taking a breath to say we're sorry you're gone. Yeah, that's the, that's the meeting I was uh, talking yeah. about. So, now, here we are with this horrible thing, and if you've been to Waipaho, you know how many businesses have been lost. And if it ends at Middle Street, which seems to me to be the best solution, because there are at least 500 buses that transverse Middle Street every day. So you can get on a bus and go someplace. My point in the position you're talking about, which is let's stop it at Middle Street. Now, whether it gets built onto Ala Moana later or not, my argument and Advocates for Consumer Rights argument and another hat that I wear uh, the uh, Kapuna Caucus, the Democratic Party's position is, uh, no, I misspoke. Uh, uh, the uh, Kapuna Caucus supports raising the tat. Right. Uh, advocates consumer for consumer rights in my position is, let's put
put it on pause, stop it at Middle Street, and get it operating between where it starts, way out in Eva, and Middle Street. And get the bugs worked out of it, see what it costs to operate, and then decide if we want to continue to build it onto Alamoana and hopefully later the university. Well, okay, so what will the electric bill be? If you push the button and it starts rolling down the track, <laughs> what happens with the electric bill for all of us? Because we got to pay that. What does it cost to operate this thing? Now, it's up high and you got folks riding the bus. What happens if you have an emergency? Let's say somebody has a heart attack on the thing. How do the emergency people get up there to the patient, to the person? That's number one. If you have a disturbance on there and there's no driver, who, who is, what happens? Those are, you see, I'm a bus rider. Those things I have seen happen on the bus. What happens when you're up there? How do you get emergency vehicles there? How do you get timely? Well, the questions you're posing, Marcia, are a whole other show. Uh, suffice to say, we do not know what it's going to cost to operate because those numbers have not been put forth. As I understand it, uh, uh, certainly a, a additional substation is going to have to be built. Some are saying they're going to have to have a whole entire power plant for it, a separate power plant. I do not know because it's not been discussed, nor has it been really widely discussed the fact that there's only one restroom in each one of them, and those are going to be locked with a uh, security person on site with the key. Now, you know, getting off of a cold bus, sometimes the first thing, I'm a bus rider too, I'm looking for a place to pee. And in this town, that's, that's, hard, to that's find. hard to find. That's hard so, to find. So all, these are unanswered questions. And the other reason I would like to see uh, some resolution to getting this thing operating out there is so we can begin the important dialogue about affordable housing along the transient corridor, the TOD, the corridor, uh, the right-of-way. Yeah, because once you get in town, there is none. Right, but out there out, in out, the country, yes. there's plenty. Yeah, because once you get to um, Chinatown, there's not a square inch of space. None. Well, or Waipahu, you know. Or not even Waipahu. There's not a yeah, lot of room no, there. No room. But all that, all that, all that ever, it's ever. ever plain, yeah. That's the transit, uh, or that's the TOD, the, the uh, what is it, transit development, development yeah. corridor. Mm -hmm. uh, that we need to be talking about. And my fear is that the big developers are going to get a hold of all that land and there will be no affordable housing bill. And I would bet a fat man that you're right. <laughs> but if you look, try to take that to Ala Moana. Have you been down to Ala Moana recently mm -hmm, and yeah. see all those million dollar condos and you're going to ride a train in their view plane? I don't think so. You're going to ride a train past Bird off good Again, wind. this wasn't my idea. <laughs> I don't like it any better than anyone else does, but this is what is coming. I, the people already, um, well, a friend of mine just finished doing a survey at the uh, marketplace, the international marketplace, and almost to a person, they were dissatisfied with Honolulu because of all of the high-end commercial spaces. And one person said she had just left Jamaica and it was so lovely, and the music and the people and the Jamaican flavor, and she gets here and it's all high-end, and she's disappointed. Well, the naysayers and the war, we, we've warned, uh, the, the people with a little common sense have warned the city council for years about this, and that's one point I want to make before we leave. Uh, the city council makes decisions today that really won't, many won't have any effect for years. They won't show up. And yet while organizations will go to the legislature, 
they rarely turn up at the city council. And so I encourage people, we've got to keep a better eye on this city yep. council. Well, they have the plans and permitting department in the, in the city council, which they have to go to. But the plans, the nat as we learned last year when we were working on the amendments, the master plan is 25 years old. So the city is still working on a master plan that's 25 years old. And Ho'opili was on the master plan 25 years ago. Things have changed in 25 years. Yes. So that everything now is different than the master plan that the city is working on. And well, this is, this is why citizens must become more involved in, in their government. It, they, we must. We must get better organized. We must uh, raise our voices more often and not be afraid of retribution, which is one reason a lot of people don't yep. say well, anything. Well, you know, you can ask anybody on the street for all of the words to um, any, you name it, uh, Taylor Swift's newest song. They know them all. But you ask, who is your city council person? They don't know. I know. And they don't know who their elected representative or senator are. Yeah. Mostly and don't. Mostly don't. And one last thing before we go, because I've been complaining about this forever. In 1908, when the city was made, the city and county of Honolulu became incorporated, there were nine city council people. They were called county different but nine. Today, still, we have nine. Everything has changed. The population's changed. The face of the island has changed. Everything has changed. Still, only nine people. We have 51 House members, nine council people. That has to be changed. I agree. That, that, let's start there. Let's figure out how to change well, that. Let's do another show on, on that. that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you so much for spending this day with us, and we'll see you next week. Aloha.